Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Friday, March the 10th, a slow day at the Capitol Day, no uh, meetings of the House or Senate. That's a good thing. One committee did meet and changed the membership of the trauma committee. But other than that, quiet. Not so quiet other places, however. How about sex and Arkansas Tech? There's a topic. I think we told you before that some legislators have become unhappy about an event yesterday on the Arkansas Tech campus called Sex on the Lawn. Sexy name, but it's not really very sexy. Some students provide pamphlets and information about sex education, sexually transmitted diseases, relationships, that sort of thing. Some of it's tailored, yes, to LGBT students, which particularly upset some legislators. Well, they were wrong in saying this was funded by public money. It's not. But a legislator from Russellville, Trevor Brown, who's on the far right wing of the extreme wing of the Republican Party, has inserted an amendment into the record attempting to cut out money for the Division of Diversity and Inclusion at Arkansas Tech from their appropriation bill. This is real dirty business to be done on the secret next week in the Special Language Subcommittee. He's doing the dirty work of Mary Bentley of Perryville. Russellville's not in her district, but she was mortally offended by the fact that they're having sex education at Arkansas Tech. She says that's not really her problem. She says her constituents have been complaining. Well, her constituents don't uh, live in Russellville for one thing, and we don't want constituents dis deciding what we should or should not teach at colleges. But that's where we are today. The Arkansas Tech president has made a strong statement in favor of this department. She says it serves minorities of, of all sorts, race, ethnic and otherwise, women, LGBT students, and it's, it's an important part of education. We'll see how this works out. The legislators are not above bullying people they don't like, and Trevor Drown has a record of bullying Arkansas Tech on some other issues, so there's more to be reported on that story. Elsewhere, big news yesterday in El Dorado, although it's been missed by all other news organizations so far, there was a $46.5 million jury verdict against a doctor in the Washita County Medical Center for failing to diagnose a jaundice problem in a child born in 2014 at the med center. The child had <coughs> suffered irreversible brain damage as a result. There's going to be an immense cost of caring for the child as she grows up throughout her life. She's not going to be able to work and she'll need constant care for the rest of her life. The news here is, is, is the size of the verdict. The plaintiff's lawyer said they could have justified a higher verdict. Some people will see this as a reason why we should not have a tort reform amendment. It's precisely why we should not have one. Uh, without the ability to go to court and right wrongs when people make decisions, it's not so much that this family would be limited in the damages they could recover under the tort reform amendment, but it will discourage people from filing suits that make people do a better job of caring for all of us, and that's important to everybody. Simmons First National Bank in Pine Bluff announced today that it had bought the Axiom headquarters building downtown. Axiom no longer occupied very much of that space. It's going to take its final employees and move back to Conway, its original headquarters. Good news for Little Rock is, is this puts the building back on the tax rolls. The building was built with a city tax-free bond issue and they were given a full abatement from property taxes. Schools can use the money. Ruth Carney, the mayor of Hot Springs, since January 1st, 2011, uh, submitted a brief resignation letter effective immediately this morning. She didn't give a reason, said it had been quite a journey. She thanked the city. She'd been somewhat controversial in times, criticizing the St. Patrick's Day parade there for one thing, but she'd had a personal tragedy in, in, within the last year or so, and that perhaps has made the job less fun than it was for her. She was an interesting character, to be sure. <clears throat> you go to the Arkansas blog this morning, you'll find some a rundown of all the bills that have been filed this session to help payday lenders come back into Arkansas and charge interest rates as high as 250% on small loans. The problem is, is that Dustin McDaniel, who fought the payday lenders to a standstill when he was Attorney General, no longer has a good consumer protection advocate in the Attorney General's Office of Arkansas. Leslie Rutledge is busy suing against guns, suing to protect gay discrimination, suing to protect pollution all over the country, but doesn't seem to care much about payday lenders charging usurious rates. Happily, our friend Jason Rapert happens to be on the right side of this issue with some legislation to try and curb the abuse uses of the payday lending industry. Late yesterday, I think after we taped, we had the final outcome of the move to pull the gun bill out of the Senate committee, and it was done. The Senate pulled the bill out of committee and passed a, an amended version of the campus carry bill that not only will open college campuses in Arkansas to anybody of any age able to get a concealed carry permit with guns, but will also open the state capitol, courthouses in Arkansas, high school athletic events, UAMS, just about any place you can name. Uh, the NRA is very happy about it, and they're hoping to quickly finish passage of the bill next week in the House. Finally, this note of interest to me, uh, 
some people in, in the Congress do seem to still be concerned about Russian influence on American elections. R Senator Ben Sasse, a Nebraska Republican, happens to be one of them, and he's demanded some answers from Justice on whether they're really investigating these problems or not. And Mike Flynn's involvement with the Russians while he was a, a security advisor of all things. But this was an interesting fact. There are more FBI agents devoted still to studying Hillary Clinton's emails than there are to studying how much Russia influenced the national election in the United States. That says something to me about priorities and I'm not very good at that. I'm Max Brantley. I'm going to resist. I hope you do too.